Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. So today what I'm going to be showing you is how you can pass a data value from one HTML page to another using JavaScript. And I'm going to be showing you how you can do that using the local storage API, which stores data in your browser so that it's available for you to recall again on future pages. So to begin this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how you can pass some user input string data from this page, index.html, to another page that I've prepared, next.html. And after that, I'll be showing you how you can pass on other types of data, such as a custom object or an array. Okay, so let's start by extracting user input data from this form so we can pass it on to the next page. So I'll create my script down here. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to need to select some of the elements. So first of all, I want to select the form get that by its ID because I'm going to listen out for a submit event on the form. I also want to select the first name element because I want to get the value of that to pass on to the next page. And likewise with the last name element, I'm going to want to select that as well. Okay, so I'm going to extract the data from this form when the user clicks the submit button. So I'm going to add an event listener to the form and that's going to be listening out for a submit. And when that happens, this function is going to be run. Now, the first thing I want to do is to prevent the default behavior of HTML, which will try submitting the form itself and refresh the page. So to prevent that, you call the prevent default method on the available event object. Okay, so now I'm ready to start extracting data from the form. So I'm going to want the value of the first name element. And I'm also going to want the value of the last name element. And I'll store those in new variables. Okay, so now that I have these values, I'm going to be using the local storage API to store these values in the user's browser. And then at the other end, next.html, I'm going to be using it again to extract the values that have been stored. So it's available on the global window. So you can call it window.localStorageCamel case, but because it's on the global window, you actually don't need the window bit. So you can just write local storage, and then you have a set of methods available on local storage that allow you to access the local storage, to store something there, to read something from local storage, or to clear it, or to just delete one of the items. So what we're going to want to do here is to write to local storage. So the way that you do that is you call set item. So set item accepts two arguments. The first one is the key by which you want to save the data. So in this case, I'm going to use the key of first name. And the second argument, you want to pass in the data that you actually want to store in local storage. And I'm going to repeat that now. So that last name is also stored in local storage. So again, I need to pass in the data there. Okay, so that is how you write string data to the local storage in your browser. So let's check if that's working now. So the first thing I'm going to do is open the console log and see what's in local storage. So you can see here, it has a length of zero. There's nothing in local storage at the moment. Now I'm going to enter some data here, submit the form, and upon submitting the form, this should have run the function storing the data I entered to local storage. So let's call that again. Now you can see it's length two and I have the last name developer, first name web. So this data will still be available on the next page where I'll be able to extract it and use it there. So now we've checked this out, let's redirect to the next.html page when the form is submitted after the items have been set to local storage. So to do this, I call window.location and I set the URL to next html okay so i'll save this index.html file now 
and let's extract the data from local storage on the next page. So again, I'm going to be calling local storage. This time I'm going to be using the get item method and inside the parentheses, I need to enter the key that I use to store the bit of data that I want to access. So in this case, it's first name and I want to access last name as well. Okay, so these calls are going to be returning the value. So I want to save a reference to each of them in a variable in this script on the next page. And I'm going to write each of these values inside these spans with the ID of first name and last name. So first I need to select both of them. And I'm going to set the text content to first name for this first one. And then I'll do the same for last name. Okay, so now when I submit the form in index.html and I'm redirected here, I should see the values that I enter between these span elements. Okay, so in index.html, I'm going to enter the same data as I did last time. The difference is when I hit next page now, I'm going to be redirected to next.html. And when I get to next.html, I'm extracting the data that exists in local storage and displaying it now on the page. So if I call local storage here in the console log, you can see that the data has persisted from index.html to next.html. Now, what if instead of storing string data, you want to store a JavaScript object in local storage? So you can't do it directly because you can only store string data in local storage if you try it. So I'll show you what happens here. So I'll set the item, call it my object, and I'll pass in an object with two values. So first name value, and also the last name value. So I'm going to comment this out, and I'm going to clean this up a bit. And then in next.html, I'm going to comment out all of this and try logging the object to the console. So local storage dot get item and it's my object and I want to log that to the console. Okay, so let's see what happens. I'm going to go back to the previous page. I don't need to enter any data because I'm only logging to the console here. You can see you get object object, which is the same value you would get if you try writing an object directly to the DOM. Okay, so the change you need to make in index.html is to call the json.stringify method. And you want to pass in your object to json stringify, and that's going to convert your JavaScript object to json string format. And now in next.html, we're extracting string data so I want this to be a JavaScript object again. I can do that by calling json.pass and passing in what I'm getting back in local storage now. So let's see if this is working in the browser now. I'm going to enter the same data as before. Now, when I click next page, you can see a JavaScript object is being logged to the console. So I've successfully stringified it and then passed it at the other end back into a JavaScript object. Now, if your data happens to be in array format, that also can't be stored directly in local storage, but you can use this method that we're using with this object to stringify it and then convert it back to an array at the other end. So I'll convert my data here to an array. Need to get rid of the keys and enter the square brackets. Now that's entering these two values in this array. And at the other end, I don't need to make any changes here. Of course, I change this to something like my array in practice, but for this purpose, I'm just going to go ahead and test it. 
So web developer, you can see now I get the array back. Now, before you go crazy using local storage, you should know that most browsers set an upper limit of the amount that can be stored by a particular domain at about five megabytes. So at a certain point, if you've stored a lot of things in local storage, it will be full and you won't be able to store anything more in it. So there are two ways of getting around that. The first thing to do is to clear local storage once you've finished using it, so it's empty again. So you can do that by calling local storage, call the clear method, and that's going to remove everything from local storage. Just for completeness, if you want to remove a particular item, you can do that by passing in the key of an item to the remove method. So this is one option to make sure that it doesn't get too full. Another option is to use session storage instead of local storage. So data set using local storage, it persists until it is cleared. But sometimes you don't need that. So an alternative is to use session storage. In this case, the data set only lasts as long as the session. So when the user closes the tab on your page, the data that you've stored is automatically deleted. Now I need to be consistent here. If I'm setting session storage, then I have to extract the data by calling get item on session storage as well. So now if I run this again in the browser, same data, you see that I'm still getting the array through. The difference is that when I open a new tab and I navigate to this page, you see that it's logging null and that is because session storage is empty. Local storage is actually still there. So you can see that I still have the last name and first name developer and the object that I logged. So you can see here how local storage can easily get full over time. So in cases where you only need data persist for the length of a session, consider using session storage instead. And that is it for this tutorial. So I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider hitting the like button down below this video. And if you'd like to see more content like this, you can do so by subscribing to the channel.